This is a tutorial for how to generate nav meshes, use the tools to create the nav meshes, and how to stop zombies from getting stuck in walls and stuff, and allow them to navigate around properly. Because this is something that a lot of config creators don't do, or they just do it improperly, and you're left with zombies getting stuck. So for this tutorial, you're going to need the console, which you can find in the options keyboard, and then in advanced. And it, by default, this is the tilde key on your keyboard. But if it's not, you can change it in the settings easily. So for the nav mesh, you can automatically generate it to save some time, where the engine will go ahead and place the nav meshes for you. To do this, you can open your console and type nav underscore generate. And if you see the walkable seed positions error, you can type nav mark walkable and then do nav generate. And if you do generate it, you're going to have to clean up after the engine and remove nav meshes off of props and outside of the map. And if you don't generate it, you're going to have to be doing a lot of the stuff that the engine can do automatically, manually, which can take some time. You can find the nav mesh tools in the Q menu by selecting Advanced, then scrolling all the way down. For the Change Attributes tool, left-clicking allows jumping, and right-clicking disallows jumping. For Connecting, you reload to select, and you left click to connect. For splice, you simply right click where it highlights. For edit area, you left click to splice, reload to select, and right click to merge the meshes. For delete area, you just left click. For creating a nav mesh, you left click to start, and right click to end. For a nav mesh to be correctly aligned, think of a CPU icon, except each line is a point that a nav mesh can connect to. If the nav mesh is not in any of the lines, then you cannot connect the two. When working on nav meshes, the two things you should always do is delete meshes outside of the map and delete meshes off of props. You would think that the doorways are easy, but it's actually not hard to mess up and have the zombies walk into the walls, unable to get to the player. You just want to make sure that the mesh is as thin as possible between doorways. This is totally run, they will cut to get to their target. Instead, you want to push the path further past the door so that they'll go all the way. Here are some door examples. For ramps, it's pretty easy. You just want to create a mesh and then have it go all the way over on hovering on top of one that is near the bottom of the stairs. And you want to hover over at least this much. 
so that it registers that there's a mesh there. And then you just want to go to your corners tool and you want to left click it. And anywhere you see that the mesh might be hovering, you want to splice it there. So you might want to just create a bunch of splices in this case because this whole mesh is hovering. And then when you're done with that, you want to go to your corners tool and left click each one of those spliced meshes and it should create a perfectly sloped nav mesh that isn't hovering. And just like doors, you should keep the nav mesh as centered as possible. And ramps are pretty much handled just like stairs. And just like doors, you would think that corners are easy, but actually no. If they were generated by the engine, they are automatically run, and you should fix them. Real diagonal meshes are not possible. You can only build with squares aligned with the world or using the slopes with the corners tool. I'll show next why you would want to use diagonal squares. Nav locks are marked areas that zombies will avoid, mainly for doors, but you can use them for other things too by right clicking on a mesh. You can't see navlocks by default, but you can type developer1 in the console to see them. You should never be able to stand on navlocks. Players can abuse this to stop zombies from targeting them. It's worth the extra effort to redo the nav mesh. As long as the navlock is under the door and cannot be stood on, then it's fine. To link a door to a navlock, you need to left click the door and then left click the nav mesh with the navlocker tool. One of the most useful commands is the one that allows you to see the zombie paths, and it's the one that I've been using for this entire tutorial. One thing everybody should know is that you do not need to have the nav mesh touch the wall. There can be a gap and it will work perfectly fine. The zombies will still be able to get to you. And it's actually better this way because then the zombies won't get stuck on the walls all the time. If you're testing the nav meshes to see if the zombies can get there properly, one helpful command is a command to toggle the game's speed so that when you press it, it goes faster, and when you press it again, it goes back to normal. This can save a lot of time when testing navigation.
you'd want to put this in your Gary's Mods auto exec config, which is a config file that executes when the game launches. If you come across a nav mesh that has props all over it and you can't get to it, one good way to do this is to go under the map. If you suffer from random locked nav meshes scattered around the map, instead of deleting them, you should enter this command, which will automatically delete all of them. A locked nav mesh is one that zombies will avoid. It's a nav lock that's not connected to a door. Okay, so if you delete meshes off of props, delete meshes outside the map, keep a gap between the nav meshes and the walls, do the stairs correctly, do the doors correctly, do the corners correctly, and most importantly, test your nav meshes, you should have a pretty solid nav mesh for your config, and people will have a much better experience playing them.